Hello, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I want to read this fall. I feel like I never do videos like this, but I don't know. I am just in that like fall mood. The Halloween spirit, if you will, has taken over me, as you can maybe tell by my t-shirt. And I just put together a list of books that I'm really excited to read during the season as it gets cooler. I mean, you can read most of these books any time of year, but I feel like my mood sort of changes as the seasons go on. I feel like I am more interested in reading fantasy and like cozier books as the year kind of like progresses. So this list is a kind of like amalgamation of all of the different things. That I'm excited to read. I have 10 books ish on this list that I'm excited to read and I'm just gonna like let you know what they are. Hopefully I can keep myself accountable and actually read these by making this video and also maybe you can get some like inspiration for books if you maybe haven't heard of these or didn't know they were coming out. So first up I have Hopeless by Elsie Silver. This is obviously a book that I'm super excited to read. I am planning on reading it in the next day or so because I have an arc of it which is super exciting and this book is one that I'm like excited about specifically because of the premise of the book. Not all of these books I'm excited about because of the premise like sometimes I just want like the vibes right. This one I'm excited about because of the premise though because it's about our two main characters. Our hero is a military hero with a tortured past. That's like what the description of him, the Goodreads page says, which I'm very, very into. And then our heroine is like this outcast bartender who I think has like maybe kind of a bad reputation. And she and the hero have this sort of like fake fiance, uh, fake engagement going on, I think as a part of a bet maybe. And I'm just really curious to see how this plays out. I feel like I really, really love when Elsie Silver does damaged heroes. They just happen to work really well for me. The premise of this one isn't exactly identical to a photo finish, but it has similar vibes to it. So I am very excited to see how this one works out for me. And I mean, it's Elsie Silver. It's also the last book in the Chestnut Spring series, which is kind of wild, but she did announce a new series, which I'm also excited about. I think the first one in that comes out next year. But the next book on my list is a physical book and it's a fantasy. We have One for My Enemy by Olive e. Blake. I actually already started this one. I'm 50 pages in. And this one's really interesting because I feel like the vibes are a little all over the place, but in a fun way. It's about two rival witch families. You have this like family of seven witch sisters. Their mom is Baba Yaga. She owns owns this like shop, I guess, uh, where she sells a bunch of stuff kind of as a front, serums and like body care items. But really it's a front for her like drug business, I guess. <laughs> she sells drugs to fellow witchy people. And I think now she's trying to like sell drugs to humans as well, or like non-witches. Uh, and then we have a rival witch family, I guess sells like magically imbued objects. And also their front is like a furniture store. Three sons and a father. Uh, I don't know where the respective like spouses are for either of these families, but we've got a patriarch and a patriarch in these sort of like, you know, rival families. One of the brothers is like in a coma because of one of the female witches from the other family. And so the guys are looking to get revenge. I guess they're trying to like infiltrate. There's also sort of a romantic thread. The guy that's trying to infiltrate kind of gets in with the youngest sister in this family. And there's kind of a romantic tension going on. I'm curious to see how things like unfold. I feel like all of you Blake's writing tends to be, I don't wanna say convoluted, but a little bit twisty. And so far the writing is a little bit uh, much for what I want. Like I went into this and I was like, oh, I'm excited about the premise. And then I was like, oh, I forgot about the writing. That being said, like I am excited to finish this one off and to just read something else that isn't the Atlas Six by this author. I tried Alone With You in the Ether and that one did not work for me, but like this one, I don't know. I'm tentatively excited for it. I'm reading it in this week's weekly vlog. So uh, you'll see that in <laughs> four or five weeks. I'm like behind on posting the weekly vlogs, but I've been doing them pretty much every week. So uh, you'll see this reading vlog eventually. So next is Caught Up by Liz Tomford. Oh my God. This actually might be like my most anticipated book of the next like month or two. This one is a single dad baseball romance. He ends up, I think, falling for his kid's nanny. He's like run through a ton of nannies and hasn't really had much luck. The heroine is actually not a nanny by like profession. She is a pastry chef, but she's not very inspired. And I think her dad is either the coach or the owner of the team. Kind of like hooks her up with like a temporary job working for this guy as a nanny. I'm just really excited about it. I love a good single dad romance. And for some reason, single dad romances give fall vibes to me. I don't know why. Honestly, like single parent romances in general just give like fall winter vibes. I I love Liz Tom Ford. This one comes out in October. I am reading this. I'm reading vlog, but it'll probably end up being in November reasons, uh, mostly because it's like a monthly pick, a monthly book club for the month of November. So you'll see me reading it at some point, I'm sure, but very hyped for this one, like very, very hyped. Right Move was like probably one of my favorite books of the year, so excited. Here's something else I'm excited about that you might not have guessed. We have the Once Upon a Broken Heart series by Stephanie Garber. I had no idea these books existed. I think like sort of passively I knew they existed. I'd seen these covers before, but I knew nothing about these books. I had not heard anyone talk about these books, but I asked y'all what your favorite book 
books of 2023 are in a community post <laughs> on my YouTube channel. If you want to like go and enter your favorite books of 2023, it's still open. It's a, it's a Google form, anonymous, so you can kind of like submit your favorites. Anyway, uh, this series and the second book in particular were like y'all's favorite books of 2023. And again, I'd like never really heard of these books. You didn't really know what they were about. I know that they're YA. I know that I didn't really like Caraval. So I just, I didn't know what to think. But these books are about someone named Evangeline Fox. And I think her like one true love is marrying someone else. So she strikes up a deal with the Prince of Hearts and he is going to help her. But obviously he's a trickster. And I'm assuming she like falls for him instead. I don't know. I'm tentatively excited. It's so funny. I feel like I just bitched about how I don't really like YA in the video I did where I talked about like the most popular books of the past few years or something like that. I can't remember what the title of the video is, but it's a list video, my most recent list video. I complain that I'm like an old hag and don't like YA. And I'm not saying that's not true, but I feel like lately I've been much more open to different genres. Not that I don't still love romance, but I feel like I have been more interested in other things lately. Uh, mostly like fantasy. This is YA fantasy. And if y'all love it, like I'm down to read it. You know what I mean? I trust your judgment <laughs> to an extent. And I'm thinking what I'm going to do is read the trilogy in like a vlog. I don't know if it's going to be a dedicated vlog or if I'll read all three of them in like a weekly reading vlog, but prepare to see me read these on the channel for sure. And then like the vlog clips of this book are going to be in that like I read your 10 best books of 2023 or like read my subscribers favorite books of the year video. I, I do one of those every year. So it it's coming. You'll see it eventually in December. Um, but yeah, these I'm excited about. Strangely excited. I don't know much about the books. I think that like bodes well personally. Next up we have, I don't know if it's Madam or Madame by Sarah Kate. It is the fifth or sixth book. I think it's the fifth book in the Salacious Players Club series. This one has a lady Dom and a guy named Clay who's like submissive to her, but it's I think a female female male romance, like a polyamorous romance. I don't really know much about this. I'm going to be honest with you, but I like Sarah Kate. I've read every book in the series and I figured I'd give it a go. I know a lot of people were unhappy that it wasn't just a queer, like female, female romance. And I get that, but I am willing to like withhold my judgment and I'm just like excited to give this one a try. I think it's, uh, the thing about Sarah Kate series, especially this one, is it's just like very chill and passive. They're, they're sexy, they're smutty. They're not like the most emotionally like challenging or deep things ever, but like that's fine. Sometimes that's what I want. And I think with all the other stuff that I'm reading in the fall, I think this will be a good like palette cleanser and or like easy thing to get into. Anyway, next up I have Good Game by Madison Fox. I'm very excited about this one. If you don't follow Madison on Instagram and YouTube, don't know what you're doing. I think her handle used to be like Princess of Paperbacks or something. I have known her for a while and I'm just so excited and like happy and proud and whatever for her. She just published a book called Good Game and I think it comes out today actually. So check it out on Kindle Unlimited. I will be doing that very soon. It's going to be featured in a Kindle Unlimited vlog, but this is such an interesting premise and idea because I feel like streaming and like gamers and stuff has have been a thing for a while and I just don't think I've read any like streamer romances. So this one's about our heroine Stevie who I believe like dumps her cheating boyfriend. She She's not really looking for something new, but she ends up sleeping with this famous streamer named Blade. And I think it's a like mistaken identity or secret identity novel where she like knows the guy in real life, but doesn't know that he's Blade. And I'm just really excited to give this one a try. Again, like I've never read a streamer romance, but like low key, that's very brilliant. Like good job, great idea. I think that will appeal to a lot of people. And uh, it's just really cool seeing other people in the community get to publish books, especially via Kindle Unlimited. Like that is my dream, getting to see someone else live my dream. I just love to see it. It's very inspiring to me. So I'm very excited to give this one a go. And uh, I've heard that the smut is really good. So, you know, excited to see it for myself. I was gonna, I can't even push my hair to the side, y'all. I've got bangs. Next up is another book that I have a physical copy of, uh, Sword Catcher by Cassandra Clare. So this one is interesting uh, premise wise. This is Cassandra Clare's first ever adult novel. And it's, I think her first ever like non Shadowhunters novel, which is also kind of wild. It's a lot thicker than I expected, but I am excited for this one for so many reasons, mostly because I feel like this is exactly what I need, which is accessible adult fantasy. I feel like a lot of adult fantasy is just too complex for me. And it's not that I'm too stupid to understand it, which is like honestly probably part of the problem, but it's that I want something that's easy to read. I don't necessarily want something that's gonna rattle my brain in my skull. I just want something that's gonna scratch an itch, okay? Anyway, this one is about our two main characters, Kel and Lynn, I believe. Let me just double check on that. Yeah, Kel is an orphan. He ends up getting, I don't want to say captured by the royal family, but he is now the body double for the prince. And his job is literally to like catch a sword for the prince. You know what I mean? Like if he dies, he dies. That's his job. He's probably gonna die at some point. And he comes in contact with this chick named Lynn. She is a, I don't know if she's like formally, 
formally a doctor, but she has magical abilities and she's trying to help a friend who is sick and she doesn't have, like despite her magic, she doesn't have the ability to heal her friend. So she's like, gotta find some forbidden knowledge, gotta like figure this shit out. And by some chance circumstance, these two meet, they team up and they end up, I don't know, like going into the seedy underbelly of the town and they get in, into leagues with the rag picker king, the criminal ruler of, is it Castellane's underworld? Offers them each what they want the most. So shadows, intrigue. I, I feel like this is gonna be fun. I'm very excited about this. I've heard that the romance isn't like super heavy in this one, but it is a series and you know, Cassandra Clare really does like her romance in her fantasy. So I'm very curious to see what she does in an adult novel. I mean, I, if you didn't know, am sadly one of the biggest like shadow hunters stands. So I'm excited to give this one a try and I will be reading this again in a vlog here to come. I believe I'm going to read this in like a weekly vlog, probably this week's if I'm being honest with myself. So excited to give this one a try. And then the last three books that I have are just romances. I say just romances, but they're romances. Uh, Wildfire by Hannah Grace. I don't know why this book was published now in October because it definitely gives summer vibes, but it's about two people who go to this university. They end up sleeping together. One night stands situation and then they have to be in kind of forced proximity afterwards because they're both going to be camp counselors at the same camp. So uh, intriguing premise, intriguing idea. I am interested in this book mostly because I liked Icebreaker. I feel like it was a really good, I don't want to say jumping off point, but it was a great first novel. Uh, maybe not like the best book I've ever read, but I was excited to read more from this author and I'm excited to give her a second chance, especially now that like her books are traditionally published. Like maybe the editing will be better on this one. I don't know. Excited about it. Excited to give it a try. Uh, next I have Watch Your Mouth by Candy Steiner. This this is one that like I think I'm more tentatively excited about than anything just because I didn't have the best of luck with the first book in the series but this is her like adult romance. I I say I say adult because the first series that I read by her like the first sports romance was new adult football romance like set in college. This is not. Uh, anyway it's a brother's best friend hockey romance. In the first book we get introduced to like a bunch of different hockey players and um, we kind of get some introduction into these characters but I think there's like a forced proximity element. I don't know like a ton about this book. I don't. I mean as a brother's best friend hockey romance I feel like I don't need to know much more but I'm sure it's gonna be really steamy. I think that's sort of the vibe of the series is that it is very steamy which like sometimes works for me sometimes doesn't. I'm, I'm tentatively excited about this one. Then I have The Graham Effect by Miss L. Kennedy. I'm excited about this one again kind of tentatively. I am actually excited about it because I have an argument but anyway that's besides the point. This book is about our heroine Gigi Graham who is the daughter of Garrett Graham from The Deal and she is a women's hockey player who's like at odds with this guy named Ryder. I don't know if it's like an enemies to lover situation but like he is the captain of the men's hockey team. And I think they sort of butt heads but they have to team up because he wants her to put in a good word with his dad or with her dad I guess you know because her dad's Garrett Graham this like big star. I don't know much more about this one. I feel like the premise for this was like a little confusing and a little all over the place, but I'm sure once I get into the book, I'll like understand it more. I'm excited about this one. I feel like Elle Kennedy really excels at her sports romances and I have not had a good luck with her other series that she's like published more recently, but I am excited to give this one a try and I'm hoping that it lives up to my expectations for it. It's also like a lot longer than I expected. I'm like eyeing the book on my shelf over there, um, but yeah, excited to give this one a try. And lastly, this is like a bonus, I guess. I really want to continue on with the Big Shot Mystery series by Ellie Alexander. I feel like I am in my cozy mystery era and I just really have enjoyed reading this series before I go to sleep because I have had a lot of trouble sleeping. I'm like smack dab in the middle of an IVF cycle right now um, and as my ovaries are growing I'm not comfortable. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm like just deeply uncomfortable which is why I'm in this oversized t-shirt and reading a cozy mystery before bed is so fucking soothing. I cannot put it into words. So I want to continue on with the series and uh, just have fun with it. I think my thing this fall is to not put any expectations on myself as to like genre or things I like have to read. I'm just making a list of things that sound good and things that I want to read and I don't know. I'm just, I'm looking forward to next three months. Uh, fall, winter is exciting here because it's like not 100 degrees outside anymore. So anyway, uh, I hope this maybe gave you some inspiration or maybe it was just fun to listen to me talk for, you know, 15 minutes. I love you so much. Thanks so much for watching this video and until next time.